One of the biggest questions I often hear from partners that have been cheated on are, why did you do it? Just tell me the truth. Answer the question! And not only that, but I see a lot of people that cheated on their partners and then their partners sent the cheating person to me to figure out why. And so a lot of the work that goes on between me and them is really trying to uncover the reasons that someone has cheated on their partner. So I thought I'd do a video today to talk about some of the reasons that I've seen in my practice that can help you have more insight into your partner and to understand more about what goes on in the minds of people that are unfaithful. My name is Leah Huynh. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and I specialize in working with couples and I work a lot with couples that deal with infidelity. Before I go into that, I do want to say that the propensity to cheat lies on a continuum, right? So on this side, you have people that will cheat no matter what, right? They are just for whatever, we'll talk about those reasons, but whether it's a good relationship, bad relationship, whether they're happy, you know, they'll just cheat no matter what. And then you have people on this side where no matter what, they won't cheat. And then there's people in the middle, right? Where if there's a perfect storm, then they will get caught up in it, right? So if there's just like your relationship's going bad, there's a beautiful coworker at work that's giving you lots of attention coming on to you and you're drunk at a party, then yes, you would, right? Otherwise you wouldn't. So I just say that because it's important to know where your partner lies on that continuum to know, you know, should you forgive him? Should you trust him or her? That where they are on that continuum um, should inform your decision on how to move forward. Forward. Okay. The second thing I just want to say also is I know I'm going to say a lot of use him, but I just want to say I acknowledge that women also do cheat. Okay. So I do see that in my office as well. And so I don't want, you know, either party to feel left out. And I, and I do acknowledge that and I'm, I'll try to be balanced. So the first sign, and this is more obvious, but I just have to put it out there. One of the reasons why people cheat is that the relationship is struggling, right? So needs for emotional or physical intimacy aren't being met, or people are just aren't connecting. They're not living the same lives, or it's hostile. There's a lot of arguing, a lot of hostility, a lot of just negative energy in the relationship, right? So sometimes it's like if you're in a desert and you don't have any water, you know, and then someone comes and it's maybe water that's not, you know, ideal, you'll still drink it, right? Because you're so thirsty. So again, this is not an excuse to cheat. It's just a reason, okay? So I'm not saying that if you have a bad relationship, this is an excuse to cheat. I'm just saying that this is oftentimes one of the reasons. With this reason, what I see oftentimes is when somebody is not getting their needs met, but they don't know how to speak up about it. They don't know how to say, hey, like I'm not feeling like we're close anymore. I feel like you're spending a lot of time at work or I need more of this from you. And so their way of coping is to go out and cheat, right? So a lot of times with these couples, I'm really encouraging people to communicate because some people grew up in families where they weren't valued for their needs and when people spoke up for their needs it was shut down or they were told you're too much so I try to tell people you need a new way of coping you need to share that you need something and both parties need to try to make that work another thing I've seen is that sometimes people use it as a way to deal with hopelessness so they just feel like they've tried everything that their partner isn't listening to them and then they fall into kind of like a semi depression and then they do something dumb like they go to a prostitute or they one night stand or something like that because they're just such in a dark place and so that's where I would tell people when you are in that dark place you really have to be aware of that because what happens is you're in that dark place then you do something that is not good and then it makes things worse right so when you're in the dark place don't cope by doing those things find somebody to talk to find a therapist find a friend find a pastor and share with them hey i'm in a dark place so that you don't do those things to cope so the next reason is modeling from parents so what i see often is that maybe a male partner had a father who cheated on his mom right so you take in what is modeled to you from your parents subconsciously and it's very powerful it's more powerful than what you might think consciously in your mind what's right and wrong what society might tell you what you see happening often becomes what is the norm or what is acceptable right so 
If you are a male and you had a father that cheated, the message that's passed down to you is it's okay or when you're mad at your spouse, you can just go to the bar and flirt with these women and do what you want to do. That kind of message really gets passed down in ways that we don't understand. The other messages that get passed down to somebody if they see their parent cheat is, for example, women can't be trusted, you need to have a backup just in case, or a man who is faithful to his wife is weak and in order to be strong and masculine, you have to have multiple women. The other one is go out there and have fun because sooner or later, the woman is gonna take advantage of you and then you're gonna be left in the dust, right? So there's lots of these subconscious messages that are passed on when you see your parent cheating. And sometimes it's not just cheating, sometimes the cheating is a representation of how the parent really feels about women or men and they can sometimes verbally say those things too and so you're just hearing it from your parent, right? The next reason that I see that people cheat is oftentimes they have an issue with their opposite sex parent. Your relationship with your opposite sex parent is a window into the world of the opposite sex, right? So if you're a woman, the way you relate with your father is how you will tend to see men, right? And same thing with women. For a man, the way he sees women is oftentimes related to his relationship with his mom, right? So if a man has had a negative relationship with his mom, oftentimes he will feel like he needs to protect himself. He can't fully give himself to the woman because she's gonna end up leaving him. She's gonna end up taking advantage of him. So he just needs to get what he wants from the woman. This is complicated because a man might feel untrusting of women, but still want to have a romantic relationship. And sometimes he doesn't even know what these unconscious feelings and biases that he might have towards women. But it plays out very subtly in life. Like if he feels like his mom was distant or was hostile, he might feel like, oh, I need to protect myself, right? I couldn't really show my mom who I really was. I can't really trust her. In the same way, I can't really give my full self to a woman, right? To one woman. I always have to have others around because I can't fully trust this one, right? Or if a man had a really controlling mother, right? He might feel like women are just there to control you and constrain you. Therefore, I'm gonna resist that. And when I'm in a romantic relationship, I'm gonna find all of the freedom that I can. I'm gonna take it for myself because I never received that as a child. And so that's where I think a lot of the healing needs to come when you have issues with your opposite sex parent and making sure that the partner that you choose, you're not reenacting that same pattern, right? And if you have a partner that is healthy, making sure that you're living out new habits and behaviors and reminding yourself that, that person is not your parent so you can find new ways to interact and live. The other thing that I see is people having trauma from a past relationship, right? So maybe somebody had a high school sweetheart that they gave their entire self to and even married them and then that person cheated on them or broke up with them and just broke their heart to pieces and that trauma was so deep that they said never again am i ever gonna give myself to somebody right and so um, that could be the same thing for a woman too that a you know a man abused her or did something to her that was traumatic and she said never again am i going to trust right because that's just the way that i protect myself and so that's the way they interact with future partners, right? They bring that into the relationship because they need to protect themselves. However, it, the way it's played out doesn't really work, right? If a man is not giving his full self to his partner and he's cheating, it's just not gonna work, right? So a lot of that is dealing with some of that trauma, processing some of that trauma and allowing that person to heal. The next reason is someone might have a genuine sex addiction, right? This is where, you know, just like any kind of addiction, it's not something that you can control, it almost controls you so even though you don't want to have an affair you don't want to um, be involved in these illicit types of activities you are drawn there and you are almost chemically dependent 
on having these kinds of experiences, that is very serious, right? Because no matter how good of a partner you are to that person, if they are not treating their addiction, they are going to continue to do these kinds of activities, right? So it's very important to make sure that if you do know someone with a sex addiction or you have a sex addiction, that you make sure that you get that treated. One thing that I've seen a lot, and I'm not saying this is true for everyone, but one thing that I've seen is a lot of sex addiction starts when people are younger. Maybe they were exposed to illicit materials or they were exposed to some kind of abuse. And so because of that, that does some powerful rewiring in the brain. And it's unfortunate, but that is what I have seen. Sometimes they just get something happens where there's that addiction there. And I always say that people with a true sex addiction, they will need some depending on the severity, right? Once a week therapy is not gonna be enough because I've seen couples that have come in for couples therapy, maybe you know once a week or once every two weeks, or they've got individual therapy. And for any kind of addiction, it's just not enough, right? Especially in the more severe cases, you really need intensive therapy, you know, individual therapy, couples therapy, you need a support group, those kinds of things. So I really encourage you if this is something that is a part of your life or part of your loved one's life to really get some help there. The next next reason that I've seen people cheat is because they miss the thrill of the chase. There's a lot of people that they get into a relationship and then it's really exciting and they love all of the chemicals that come when you first come into a relationship and then they settle down and then things calm down, things become monotonous and then it's about maintenance and that can feel kind of monotonous. They're just missing the thrill. They also may be missing the feeling of being desired. They want to know that they still got it. And so they go out and they seek these types of relationships, these affairs. And a lot of people maybe are struggling with insecurity. Maybe they don't feel attractive and they need to go out there and find somebody that will give them that attention. So I always say that for people that cheat because of the thrill, they need to understand the reality of relationships, that there's no relationship that can sustain that high, like the infatuation high, right? Because they say that that type of high is the same high that people have when they're on cocaine and it's just not sustainable to live like long term right your brain would go haywire of course we know why it's exciting but you can't find that in a long-term relationship it's going to go deep but you're going to have the depth there and you have to be willing to understand that if you want to have a long-term monogamous relationship it's going to feel less exciting at times but it's going to be deeper right so to not just say oh now that we're together it's going to be boring right that no it's just going to be different the second thing is to make sure you're growing together and making sure you're doing new things together so that your relationship doesn't become stale and then also making sure that you're showing your desirability for the other person and for the most part you're just keeping up your hygiene. You know, you're just trying to be as attractive as you can for each other, as much as you can, right? I'm not saying like, you know, you need to get liposuction or like, you know, whatever. I'm just saying like hygiene and, you know, just basic things that will help the two of you stay desirable to each other. This next reason I don't really come across a lot, but it does happen. And that's when someone is a true narcissist. When a person generally does not care about how the other person feels and they're just gonna do what they're gonna do because they feel they deserve it or they make up some kind of reason why it's okay. So when a person is truly a narcissist and they feel like they can do whatever they want, that's very dangerous. And so I would encourage you if that's the case for you to really take a look at whether you wanna stay in that kind of a situation or not. The next reason is um, not really a reason, but there's a correlation between people in power and affairs. I think we know this, we look at politicians, we look at celebrities, that there's a high incidence of just extramarital affairs in arenas where people are in positions of high power. There's a few reasons for this, and one is that research shows that men with high testosterone tend to have more cheating behavior. Men with higher levels of testosterone, they also tend to take more risk and they also seek positions of power, 
right? So you've got these men who are taking risks and they have positions of power. They are also going to tend to exhibit cheating behavior. People in power also have more access to people who are willing to cheat with them. Again, look at groupies and just people that are willing to do those kinds of things. They're usually with people that are going to be in power. I remember a while back when Bill Clinton was president and there was that scandal with Monica Lewinsky and they asked him why he cheated and his answer, I guess he was just trying to be um, honest or like he wasn't, he was just trying to not give an excuse. And he said, well, I cheated because I could. Right. And so that just shows a lot of how the positions of power enable these people to cheat. And also it's in their makeup. So again, not an excuse, but an explanation. The next reason is that there's a desire to explore suppress identities. So I got this idea from Esther Perel. She is a famous psychology that talks a lot about affairs. She wrote a book called State of Affairs and she talks about how we oftentimes put a lot of pressure on one person to be everything for us, right? And one person cannot fulfill every single one of our needs. She talks about a woman who was always the good girl and she always had a desire to express like this rebellious side of her. And so she um, ended up having an affair with a guy that was like covered in tattoos and just really like the bad boy type. And that was her way of sort of exploring this part of herself that she had never tapped into or was never given the permission to tap into in life. I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying that I don't think the solution is to go and cheat on your spouse because you want to express or you want to experience a identity that you never had a chance to express before. What I would do is to allow the person to express their needs in a safe space like therapy, process through them and find other ways to express a certain need, right? That is not detrimental to the marriage. And also to understand that one person cannot fulfill all of your needs. That's just not realistic. But to know that you can still find outlets in healthy ways. The next reason is a hard time setting boundaries. So I see this a lot with really, really nice, good, kind-hearted people that really just want to help others. In their desire to help, sometimes they get pulled in by other people that, you know, maybe an emotional affair, sharing feelings about a, an issue and they want to help them and it just kind of snowballs into something bigger because they don't know when it's starting to cross that line of like, ooh, this is becoming romantic or they see it coming becoming romantic, but they think to themselves, oh, well, I don't like this person. So I don't want to tell them like, no, I'm just going to keep going with it. I have no intention of like cheating on them or they might actually follow through if there are feelings that are involved. So this is where you have to be really cognizant of your own boundaries and being willing to set boundaries when you feel like things are going into a territory that's going to potentially cause a problem for your own relationship. The last one I want to talk about is not thinking through consequences. And this is more for people. I see a lot of this in more younger people that have not had a lot of relationship experience. They're not aware of sort of the different pitfalls that can happen in relationships. So you've got a guy who went to a bachelor party and just got really drunk and then didn't think about what could happen and then you can guess what happens next and then the, the girlfriend or the wife finds out and then it's just really bad right so i think a lot of times this is just you know life experience like knowing when there's a precarious situation that you're going to step into and saying no i know i know my own limits i know my own temptations and i'm just not going to go there because it's not worth the months and months and months of drama or jeopardizing even the relationship that I have with the person that I really love. I'm sure there's many more reasons. If you have any reasons from your own experience, please leave them in the comment box below. If you are going through an infidelity or a healing journey, my heart goes out to you. I know it's really tough. Your heart is really turned upside down. Your life is turned upside down. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you can find healing. If you want to check out my website or work with me, you can check the link down below. Take care.